So I want to end this presentation um, with this one incident, and I want you all to take home this. Um, one, one evening it was when Baba was not talking to anyone. Darshan was, uh, the, the bhajans were over in the evening. It was seven o'clock. He went, had his light dinner. Again, food of the, is an entirely different thing. He would barely hit, eat half a chapati or one chapati. That's it, with a little pickle or uh, just, just for the sake of eating something. Anyway, so he was, he had finished his dinner, come upstairs. And, um, you know, the time he takes to eat, incidentally, is by the time you sing the arati, the Sai Baba arati, by the time you finish singing, know that Baba has finished his dinner instead. Because you finish the bhajan and you go inside, arati will go on. By the time the arati is over, he's come out, his dinner is over. Like that's how it will be. Okay. Just to give you an idea, how much can you eat in that? Anyway, so this evening was seven o'clock. It had, it had finished. He went upstairs and um, his evening walk, it will be there will be an evening walk. Poor Swami will have do his exercise walking up and down in that little tiny room. He'll go up and down. Fan will be off and we will be downstairs. So he will take an evening walk a little bit. We will hear the swish swish of the robe as he would go up and down. For 10 15 minutes, then he will settle down put on the fan and then we know, okay, Swami has finished his evening walk. Just imagine, this was the Sai. For him, even the ability to walk was limited to that little room. Anyway, so he was sitting there one evening and that evening, one of those rare evenings, he decided not to speak to anyone. He said he didn't want to meet anybody. Okay. He was only reading letters. Two of us were there. We were pressing his feet. And from 7 o'clock till 8.55, almost 9 o'clock, no word was exchanged. Normally, he would say, What is the samachar? Kya kaya? Kya khaya? What was college? How was the classes? No talk. He was completely involved reading letters. He would tear this letter, put it in the dustbin, pick up another one, open it, read. Occasionally, he just sigh. Hmm. And close his eyes go into silence. Then again, come out of that stupor, if you will, again, go back to reading. It was completely in his own, in his zone, hardly aware of even us there sitting there. And when his, 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 his face was behind the letter, so we are sitting down there, right? So we are looking at each other and, and making isharas, kya ho gaya, yaar? mood kharaab hai, ki kya hai? You know, that kind of thing is so, but we are continue pressing his feet, respecting that silence. And, um, it suddenly looked up at the clock after two hours and he realized nine o'clock is time for him to go to bed. So he looked and he, and he said, hmm, he sighed. He was very introvert that evening, like very withdrawn inside. And this, he started talking to himself, barely, just barely aware we were around, right? Talking to us, but more to himself. And this is what he spoke. He said, so many letters today I read, so many letters. Every letter is give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give, give, give. Kori always craving for something. And he went on to explain, somebody wants marriage. Somebody who is married wants peace in marriage. Somebody wants child. Somebody wants who has children want to know how to take care of their children. Somebody who has a job has problems with the boss. Somebody who doesn't have a job want a job. Always wanting, 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 wanting. Hmm. He paused like that. In the Mandi, like in Telugu, you know, he says, In the Mandi letter, Chajuan, and the Korikulu, 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 Idi Kavala, Adi Kavala, Idi Kavala, Adi Kavala. This I want, that I want. And then he paused, he said, Not one letter was from Thank you. Not a single letter. That's a thank. Thank you, and you. The agony of a teacher. And then he gets up and he walks towards his bedroom, talking to himself. I have come. My plane has my plane has landed. I have come to take you all into my plane. I'm standing on the door of my plane saying, come, come. But everybody is standing there doing projects and doing bhajans and waving arati. Nobody is coming into my plane. 
nobody's coming into my plane. And we are crawling, you know, when Swami is talking and walking towards us, just barely 10 feet, right? He is talking like this, like this, involved and walking towards his door. And we are crawling on our knees because what is it? We want our namaskar. That is how we are so stupid, right? But I wanted my namaskar, so I was crawling, but at the same time listening. And this is it. I'm saying coming into my plane, nobody wants to come into my plane. Y'all are sitting there, waving arati and doing bhajans and projects. So, something Allah doing but nobody's coming to my plane and the final words that night was when I leave I won't even have five people in my plane I the mandi could talk Dorukadu. so I am not sharing this to throw a guilt complex upon us I am just sharing. This is exactly what happened. How we interpret this is entirely up to us. But when people ask me, what are those moments that changed your life? There were moments like these. What does Baba mean by coming into his plane? To me, I believe that he has come to share the highest wisdom. I have come from the heights of the Shiva Shakti principle, the Brahman principle, the Advaiti principle of I am God. I've come from that heights to tell you that you are also God. Come into my plane. I have landed in this plane. I'm saying, come into my plane. I want to take you back there. That's, that's a purpose of an avatar. That's a purpose of a teacher. Let me take you back to those heights of Vedas, Vedanta, that. But what you all are doing, we sit there and say, no, you are God, you are Avatar. Oh, I will compose this bhajan on you. I will put this flower up on you. I will decorate you this way. I will do this. I will do that. I will, all of this, but we are not ready to believe that fundamental principle that is on to believe that you and I are divine. Why is it so difficult to take that first step? We push it away saying, Are bapre, what's up, so abstract. That is all too abstract. I am not there. I'm not ready for that. By saying that, we are, we are treating something very lightly. The very basis of our existence on this planet, we take it lightly. And the very basis of Swami's teachings, we take it lightly. And we say, oh, that is all abstract. Let us simply worship him. He will take care of us. He will take care of us. And in that taking care of us, he's saying, begin to remember your own divinity. To me, getting into Baba's plane, therefore, is beginning those, opening the doors to the belief that you and I are divine. And therefore, I want to end with this beautiful mantra he gave all of us, this affirmation that he gave all of us on November 23rd. I think it was 1983 or 1984 in the discourse. He said, say this. This is my gift to you on my birthday. Say this every day. Say this. So begin to say this. What are those affirmations? I am God. I am God. I am not different from God. I am the Akhanda Parabrahman. I am Sat Chit Ananda. Grief and anxiety cannot affect me, cannot enter me. I am ever content. Fear cannot affect me. I am God. I am God. I am not different from God. Let us begin to say these, my dear sisters and brothers. Say these statements every day. Slowly the meaning will dawn upon us. Slowly our real nature, the divine nature that is willing to sprout, will help you live life to its fullest. Let our children see us saying this mantra. Let us pass this mantra to our child. This is the legacy that Sai Baba has left behind. The legacy that you and I are divine. All we have to do is to begin to remember our own divine.